Hello everyone and a very good morning to all of you. I am back here with the first chapter of civics that is the Indian constitution part 2. Students this is the last part of this chapter and in the previous lecture we have discussed only that we are going to learn the features of the Indian constitution in this part. So let's have a look on the content. Features of the Indian constitution that is lengthiest and bulkiest the preamble, federal in form and unitary in soul, fundamental rights, fundamental duties, single citizenship, the parliamentary form of government, bicameralism, separation of power, three-tier government, blend of rigidity and flexibility, constitutional amendment, universal adult franchise. And we will have a look on laws and why do we need laws. We will see what is descent also. So let's start with the first feature of the Indian cons constitution. The Indian constitution is the lengthiest and the bulkiest constitution of the world. It is one which you can get in the form of a book and can be read. Our constitution is the lengthiest one because in present time it is having 448 articles in 25 parts, 12 schedules and 104 amendments till date. Students, at the time of the framing of the constitution, when the constitution was framed, at the time it has 395 articles, 22 parts, 8 schedule and since at the time only it was commenced, formed, so that is why there was no amendment. So, please remember or you have to learn this that how many articles, how many parts, how many schedules and how many amendments till date are done to the constitution this amendment can change time to time whenever there is a need more amendments can be introduced in the constitution so the indian constitution is the lengthiest and the bulkiest written constitution in the world now we will see the next feature that is the preamble we have already learned about preamble in the previous lecture but once again we will see it so the preamble is an introduction to the constitution. As we have discussed that, preamble is the introduction page of the constitution just like the preface page of a book. It highlights the values and principles of the constitution. It also mentions the objectives that the constitution seeks to achieve. Now, some of the principles that the preamble summarizes that is sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic, justice, liberty, equality fraternity we will see some of the principles so sovereign means that india is free to formulate its internal and foreign policy and free to maintain relations with any foreign state we have learned that sovereign means supreme authority that the indian now since india is a sovereign so it is having independent authority over its government and over its internal matters Socialist state, the aim of the state is to establish socialist society that means which is free from exploitation of man by man. That means everyone is equal in this society and in which social, economic and political justice is provided to all. All type of justice that means social, economic and political also. All type of justice should be provided to every person or the every citizen of the country. Now secular state. The state has no religion of its own. We are knowing that the word secular means no official religion. So India is a country that is having no religion of its own. It does not discriminate against any religion by imposing restrictions upon it. The government of India treats every religion equally and there, was, there, was, there is no discrimination against any religion. Now, democratic state. The preamble also declares that India to be a democratic state that means which the supreme power rests in the hands of the people. That means here the people only elect their representative by the process of general election. Now republic. The president of India is elected for a fixed term by the indirect vote of the people. Here it is only written the, the president or the ruler of India cannot be hereditary. He is having fixed term and he is only chosen by the, by the people of the country indirectly. Now, 
we will see the next one the federal the constitution of india is federal in form and unitary in soul we usually say that the constitution of india is federal what is the meaning of the word federal the constitution of india defines the federal structure which means government at two levels government at two level means already we are knowing that india is a country that is having government at two levels that means one is at central level and the other is at state level we are knowing that every state of our country is having its own government we can say that india provides for a federal system of government because it provide for two governments the constitution also clearly defines the power and functions of the two levels of the government the constitution of india follows federal system with unitary bias students as all of us are knowing that after watching the situation of the country every time that in our country the central government is the more powerful one in comparison to the state government we have already learned about the three the subjects of state government central government and we have also learned about the concurrent subject that means the concurrent list so the thing is this ki ultimately the decision is in the hand of central government for some topic to it is with the central government only will powerful and some decisions will lay with the central government only like if we will talk about this one the federalism the division of power the written constitution the supremacy and rigidity of the constitution independent judiciary bicameral legislature so this is all is for everyone means these things will be followed by central government also and by state government also now we will see central government is responsible the constitution also contain unitary and the non federal features that means for which only central government will be responsible single citizenship i we will learn it about it for the flexibility of the constitution it is also in this only integrated judiciary judiciary is divided into like high court supreme court and the local courts appointment of the state government in class 7th only we have learned about the appointment of the state governor we learn we are knowing this that the state governor do not belong to any political party and is appointed by the president of the country so all these things the single citizenship flexibility integrated judiciary appointment of state government governor this is the matter of the central government so ultimately what the, it is the meaning of federalism and unitary that in some cases central government is only the powerful one now fundamental rights the fundamental rights are constituted in the third part of the constitution like we have learned that how many parts are there 25 parts are there so among that those parts the fundamental rights are composed or constituted in the third part of the constitution it guarantees certain basic rights to all citizens of india certain basic rights that is useful for every citizen of india these rights are meant for promoting political democracy and set limitations on executive and arbitrary laws of the legislature this right fundamental rights are provided to us for the for to secure ourselves to secure the citizen of india so that no one can exploit us these rights are justiciable in nature that means if we found that are any fundamental right are being violated by any of the person or by the government then we can go to the court to restore our right so that is only it means these are justiciable means which means that the read person can go to the court in order to restore his right nobody can violate our rights and a citizen can approach the court of law if his or her fundamental rights are violated however thus these rights act as negative obligations to state that means state do not exploit us because we are having our fundamental rights however these rights are not absolute and are subject to reasonable restrictions 
we are having our fundamental rights but we cannot misuse it that is why somehow we are having reasonable restrictions also these rights are essential for all round development of the individual now why we are providing with the fundamental rights because it is responsible for the overall development of every individual they uphold equality and dignity of the individual fundamental rights uphold equality and respect of every individual the larger public interest that means to fulfill everyone's interest the unity of the nation everyone is equal before the fundamental rights that means unity of the nation everyone is united now let's have a look on our fundamental rights students in next chapter of civics we will learn about our fundamental rights in detail but here you have to know that we are having six fundamental rights first is a right to equality right to freedom that is of expression right to freedom of religion right against exploitation cultural and educational rights and right to constitutional remedies so we are having six fundamental rights that is these are our basic rights i will explain you in detail in the next chapter now the next feature of the indian constitution is fundamental duties students the constitution also mentions a code of conduct code of conduct means what are our responsibility for the country that is only the fundamental duties the constitution also mentions a code of conduct that means how we have to behave for the citizens called the fundamental duties the, these fundamental duties are added by the 42nd amendment this you can learn added by the 42nd amendment now they serve as reminder to the citizen that while enjoying rights they have to be conscious about the duties this feature of the constitution tells us about that if the country is providing us some basic fundamental rights then it is our responsibility to owe our responsibility towards our country also so this feature of the constitution reminds us about that while enjoying rights we have to be conscious about the duties that we owe to our country to our society and to our towards our citizens however unlike fundamental rights these fundamental duties are not justiciable these are not justiciable that is we cannot go to the court for this these fundamental duties help us to become a good citizens of the country these by following these fundamental duties we can become a good citizen of our country these fundamental duties also we are going to learn in the next chapter in detail but i want to inform you some of the fundamental duties like respect our constitution and institution we have to respect our national flag and national anthem we have to uphold and protect the sovereignty unity and integrity of india we have to respect our government we have to promote harmony and the spirit of brotherhood so these are the some of the fundamental duties that is our duties towards our country now we will learn about single citizenship students our country india provides single citizenship only that means we are the citizen of india unlike usa which provide for the citizenship by the national government as well as the state citizenship by the respective state government you can see in the picture that a girl is belonging to the country us now i am a us citizen this girl is having the citizenship of usa also and since she belongs to the city of california or to the state of california that is why she is having the citizenship of california also in india it is not like that we are the citizen of india only we are having only one citizenship that is only known as single citizenship and this citizenship is being provided to us by the 
national government that means by the central government that we have learned now that in some points a government is unitary so that is only we are having only one citizenship that is only known as single citizenship i am a proud indian now the next one is the parliamentary form of government the constitution of india mentions that india has parliamentary form of government now we will see this what is the meaning of the parliamentary form of government that means parliament is having the right to rule the country in the parliamentary system of government prime minister and other ministers are selected from the legislatures or we are knowing that our country's government work on the basis of three organs that is the executive the legislative and the judiciary we are knowing that the executive means the one who execute the laws the legislative means the one who form the laws so here in the parliamentary form of government executive means prime minister or the council of minister so they are selected who select them from the legislatures from houses the parliament is the central legislature in india the parliament is the central legislature you can see the picture of parliament also through general election the citizens of india elect their representatives to the parliament by the medium of election only we choose our representatives those who are the member of parliament this system establishes the collective responsibility of the executive to the legislature why do we do india follow the system of parliamentary form of government so that the executive do not become the dictator and they are having legislatures to check on them the constitution also mentions the power and functions of the parliament as well a constitution also mentions the power and functions of the executives as well as of the legislatures the next one is secularism this we are familiar to this word earlier also india is a secular country it means india has no official religion that means in india every individual is free to follow his or her religion and to celebrate his or her festivals they are also follow to prosper their religion since india is a secular country so that is only he is she is not having any official religion but india is not completely disconnected to the matter of religion but it do not totally disconnect to the matter of religion especially when it demands for some reform for the welfare of the people especially when these all religious structures are not uh, means we can say that are not exploiting someone's right so for instance we can see about abolition of triple talaq so in that only a constitution interfere a government interfere next is allowing the entry of women in sabri mala temple that is also the situation where the constitution interfere into the matter of or the government interfere into the matter of religion now we will see the next that is separation of power that i have already explained you the constitution of india clearly demarcates and defines the power and functions of the three organs of the government as we are knowing that our government works at three level that is legislature that is responsible for making the law that we can say lok sabha and rajya sabha at central level and in class 7th we learn about legislative assembly and legislative council at state level next we are having executive that is responsible for implementing those laws executive means the prime minister the council of ministers at state level the chief minister and his council of minister judiciary make sure that the laws are obeyed judiciary is to provide justice to everyone and to check that everyone is following the laws or not so all three are separated all the powers are separated and all of them are there to check upon each other now next is bicameralism students in india the parliament that is responsible for the working of the yeah for the functioning of the indian government works at two level or we can say that they are having 
two houses the constitution of india provides that the parliament of india will consist of two houses which means in class 7th only we have learned about unicameral and bicameral the word unicameral means where there is one house and bicameral means where there is two house where there are two house so two houses means we learn about state government this one houses means we learn legislative assembly and two houses means we learn legislative council and assembly both here two houses means we are discussing about central government at the central level so we are having lok sabha and rajya sabha lok sabha is just like legislative assembly the house of the people and rajya sabha is just like legislative council that is council of state so this we have discussed about central level at state level it provides legislative assembly and in some states of india there is legislative council also the next is three tier government system our constitution also follows three tier government system that means the constitution categorizes the government at three tiers one is central one is state we are knowing it but it also introduce the local government that works at the local levels that is panchayati raj we learned in class 6 and municipal corporation about this also we learned in class 6 panchayati raj is the local level government for the villages and municipal corporation is the local level government for the cities so why this local government is introduced for the grassroots development of each and every for the grassroots development of the democracy so that each and every individual can participate in the decision making process of india so the constitution of india follows the three tier government system that is central government state government and local government in local government we are having panchayati raj system and municipal corporation now the next feature of our indian constitution is universal adult franchise we are already familiar with this term the constitution since india is a democracy so it is important in india that each and every individual should participate or should provide it the equal rights for vote so the constitution of india also guarantees universal adult franchise which means that every individual adult citizen of the country every individual adult citizen that means the person who is 18 or more than 18 can cast his or vote during general election can use his or her voting rights during the general elections without any kind of discrimination whether it is on any basis whether it is on the basis of caste creed religion sex region and any other factor so here you, you can see i have the right to vote because i am above 18 years so this feature of indian constitution the universal adult franchise provides right to vote to every adult indian without any discrimination next we will see blend of rigidity and flexibility students the indian constitution is not that rigid that means it is not like that that during its frame formation only when it was forming at that type time only the articles the parts the schedules were mentioned in that those schedules or articles are changing according to the need of the society or according to the need of the situation so it is flexible we can make amendment also in this constitution it is not that rigid and it is not that flexible also we cannot make changes in the constitution easily there is a process that should be followed for making changes in the constitution that we will learn later the indian constitution is a blend of rigidity and flexibility the constitution of india is neither rigid like the constitution of us it is not like rigid like hard like that cannot be mend that cannot be changed like the constitution of us nor flexible like the british constitution it is british 
British constitution means not flexible that means not flex British constitution is not a written constitution instead it is the synthesis of both rigid as well as flexible at the same time our constitution is rigid as well as flexible also now why we are using both the terms together rigid means we cannot make changes in the constitution that easily there is a process of amending our constitution and it is not like that that we cannot make any changes in our constitution our constitution is flexible it can be amend or change according to the need of the society or the situation article 368 provides for various type of amendments the article please remember the article the article c 368 provide us the type of amendments that means we can modify our constitution depending on the situation at the same time but at the same time the basic structure doctrine does not allow the core principles of the constitution to be amended we can change the constitution or we can modify or make some changes in the constitution but we cannot change the core principles of our constitution that means the principles of liberty fraternity sovereignty secularism we cannot change these principles from our constitution so our constitution is a blend of rigidity as well as flexibility also the next one is we will learn about the constitutional amendment only the constitution of india is able to adapt itself to the changing needs of the society that only i was explaining that whenever there is a need of modification in the constitution that is done since it was framed many social and economic changes have taken place in the country since the constitution was framed many changes have been taken the situation have changed a lot some guidelines given in the constitution might have become outdated so by the process of constitutional amendment it is possible to add or modify the existing rules of the constitution like we have learned about the hindu succession act student the hindu succession act was enacted in 1956 according to the need of change and demand this hindu succession amendment act that means that act amended modified and came into 2005 which gave daughters also equal share in parental property that means in the property of the parents or the father now there is the right of daughter also now as the constitution continuously modified since a constitution is modifying continuously itself according to the need of the people it is also known as the living document now if someone asks you the question that why the indian constitution is also known as a living document you can say that since the indian constitution can be modified or changed according to the need of the society that is why it is called living document now the next is what is law so law rules or law the system of rules laws are the system of rules which a particular country or community recognizes as regulating the actions of its members laws we also follow some laws laws are rules only but in the context of country it becomes laws so it may enforce by the imposition of penalties so if you are not going to follow the laws the punishments or the penalties will be imposed to you so that is only law law is a system of rules that should be followed by the citizens of every country for the smooth functioning of the country and it may enforce by the imposition of penalties why do we need laws so here are some examples to prevent anti social and unacceptable behavior laws that means you can take any example of laws if you will break the laws what happened if you will not follow the laws what will happen to regulate commercial and business transactions to identify who should rightfully own property 
to regulate family and personal relationships also to provide means of citizens to resolve disputes with other citizens so laws are the rules that prevail prevails so that the functioning of the country goes smoothly now what is decent students the meaning of the word decent is it means disagreement with official or generally agreed ideas or opinions that means that suppose that some law is issued by the or enforced by the government but we as a citizen of india found that that law is not in our favor and we are not happy with that law so we can show our disagreement to that official idea opinion or law that is only known as decent sometime when people are not happy with the laws formulated by the government they are allowed to show their displeasure that means disagreement in the form of protest protest is the way to show your disagreement or displeasure to the government dissent can show through protest now what is the meaning of protest protest means to say or show that you are disagree with something especially in public you have also seen how people are protesting how people used to protest so it is only like this since india is a democratic country such protest are very common in a democracy public opinion plays an important role if one section of the people is not happy if we are not happy with the enforced law they take the help of mass media mass media means newspaper magazines television to influence other people in the society thus dissent became become mass protest you have seen the labor strike laborers strike and all that sometimes mass protest can lead to changes in existing laws sometimes when people used to show mass you have seen the caa protest people were protesting for the caa that was introduced by the government that is only known as protest since many of the people many people are not happy with that caa introduced by the government that is why they were protesting they were showing their disagreement to the government in both the manners we have seen that they were showing in positive manner also and in negative manner also so sometimes people used to show their protest in peaceful manner and sometimes they used to show their dissent in violent manner so on the basis of this dissent can be of two types violent dissent and non violent or peaceful dissent violent dissent means like have, you have already seen in the news like burning and destroying government properties killing someone hurting someone not listening to the police hurting police we have seen in the ca protest non violent or peaceful dissent like candle march peace march signature campaigns etc they used to do the march rallies and all so that the government listen to them they see here there were wide scale protest against reservation provisions for the backward classes during the 1990s there is one example when the protest was gone for the reservation provisions for the backward class in the year 1990s the protest turned violent that means it became violent and in many places students destroyed public property some students even attempted self immolations after the proposal to make telangana a separate state was passed there were wide scale protest by people when telangana was becoming a state so at that time also there were wide scale protest by people in other states also demanding separate state so this is the here some are the example of the dissent the dissent can be shown in positive manner also peacefully also and it can be shown violently also thank you students the chapter is over i request you to watch the video read your book chapter and just fill the book exercises by your own you can also search the answers by your own we will provide you the question answer also
in some time thank you students